Welcome back everybody. Today is a little bit of a different video. We're not doing a controller. We're not doing a mod. We're not doing a keyboard. We're not doing any of that. We're actually upgrading a 3D printer. And I talked about this on a previous video. Um, and this is an older printer. Yes, it's not, it's not old as a printer. It's brand new, but it's an old model. Uh, the Ender 3, which is a pretty standard entry level for most people that get into 3D printing. So I decided to get one because, well, I wasn't into 3D printing. And now I am and have experienced 3D printing and done more than a few things. Well, now it's time to upgrade. And I know there's a thousand upgrade videos out there of the Ender 3, but if you watch our channel, well, this is an experience for you. And this might just be another person getting into 3D printing. Okay, so now you're probably wondering, what are we upgrading? So for one, we're gonna do the dual Z access uh, so that we get, cause you know, the Ender 3 only has one Z access on one side. This causes a little bit of an imbalance and can cause a little bit of a wobble and can screw up your prints at times. We're also going to do a glass bed that way prints are like, like dead flat and will come off the print bed really, really easy. We're also gonna do the Capricorn uh, Bowden tube upgrade along with the full metal housing and replacing all the springs. Cause shortly after getting this printer, I found out how many times you have to re-level this bed. And then someone said on the Reddit, the only thing you do with the springs that come with the Ender 3 is throw them in the trash. So yeah, and I also printed off a number of also of my own prints. I actually printed these out myself and these are actually just bed level knobs. And I figured why not? Because it kind of gives it a little bit of a white aesthetic. It's like a two-tone kind of aesthetic. I don't know why I went with white. I just had a bunch of white filament, so what the hell? And this little thing, that's just a knob for the uh, extruder. Uh, and this, these are just V covers. So if you don't know, the aluminum uh, housing has little V slots that hold everything in place. Uh, the ones you're not using, you can cover with V slots, these little things. And that's what's going to do. Those are going to cover those. Uh, and this little thing, that's just a cover for the LCD screen to kind of give it a little bit of a frame and meet the aesthetic of the rest of the printer. And of course, we're going to be adding a Raspberry Pi because OctoPi is a thing and it is the best way to print things. So uh, we won't be, we might not be showing you that stuff on this video. It might be a future video, but if not, there's plenty of videos out there to show you how to set up OctoPi. Um, so we're going to be adding that. All right, first thing we're going to do, we have the 3D printer on. Um, we are going to get the hot end hot so that we can remove the filament that is in it at the moment. Um, and then we are going to take out the old Bowden tube and replace it with the new one. All right, so we're gonna be adding the Capricorn uh, Bowden tube along with new fittings as well. Um, and we're also gonna be replacing the entire extruder to a metal extruder. Um, and the reason why is because over time, a plastic extruder getting exposed to heat and cold, hot, cold, hot, cold, will eventually break. Okay, so now that we've completely removed the stepper motor for now, uh, so we can have everything back together, uh, we're gonna be replacing it with completely metal housings by Creality themselves. In this next part, we're gonna be adding the Bowden tube. And you're probably wondering, well, isn't the other one that came with it just fine? No, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> this is much more durable. It'll last a whole lot longer, um, but it does come with like enough to do two printers pretty much. So you do gotta cut the size. And one thing I wanna point out, as you'll see here in a second, it has to be cut very flush, as flat as you can get it.
All right, now it's time for the next part where we're gonna be adding a second Z motor in access so that we can get a little bit more precise prints. Is if you notice, the Ender 3 only has one side supported. That isn't great. One side can become slightly lopsided at times, or it could really set off your bed level. So we're adding a second motor, a second Z axis, and second supports to have even more precise prints. All right, as you see, the first thing we did, we had to move the power supply from the main aluminum rail here all the way to the back because that's where the motor's gonna go. Now it's time, let's add the gantry back on, the top gantry. Just seal it back up. So as you can see, we have new cables here that are coming from the motherboard. We didn't get footage of actual taking the motherboard apart or anything, but uh, we did already attach the cables. Now it's just a matter of putting the plate back on the motherboard and hooking them to the step motors. Okay, so now for the kind of final part of this upgrade, we're gonna be upgrading the bed to a glass one, upgrading all the springs, and we're also going to put our own leveling knobs. See these springs? Now see these ones, they have almost no play. These ones are really, really squishy. This is the only thing you do with the springs that come with an Ender 3. As you can see right here, we are adding, taking the LCD screen off. And if you've noticed, we've already added a mod to the LCD screen, a cover, because it doesn't come with this cover. All your wires are exposed. So now we're gonna add the Raspberry Pi. The peel. As you can see, we have all these upgrades up along with some aesthetic upgrades or customization, whatever you want to call it. And this printer is, I guess, like the Ender 3 1.2, maybe. <laughs> uh, it's not bad. It is a decent printer. I do recommend this printer, even though it is more than a few years old. It is a absolutely great entry-level printer. And so far, it's printed everything we've thrown at it, including this little like SD card holder, which is a completely functional print. This all printed as one part, completely functional. Didn't have to do anything. And it printed perfect. Um, and as you saw the actual spool holder you see in the, 
you saw in the shot is also 3D printed because I didn't want the big giant thing hanging off the top of the Ender 3. That being said, this thing is actually, I think it's worth a run for a little longer. I mean, once I step up the game with 3D printing, I might get another 3D printer or two more 3D printers, who knows? But I do want to get faster 3D printers. Um, I've seen different mods building super fast 3D printers. That might be a future video if I really, really keep on diving into this. But I would say anybody thinking about getting the 3D printers and also want to upgrade, I hope this video helped you do that. And if it did, make sure to hit that subscribe button and like and share this video out. We'll be in the next one because hopefully it's going to be the fight stick I've been wanting to build for a while. So stay tuned for that video.